top three deadly plants. Number three, the giant hogweed. This plant is actually illegal to grow in many places and grow as tall as 13 feet. If you're in Europe, Canada, or the US, be careful. Because if you ever see this stuff, just touching up against it will give you third degree burns thanks to its furanic humorins that travel into your cells, mixed with UV rays from the sun, and fuse your DNA, making for a not so pretty sight. Number two, oleander. Aptly named since the chemical inside it that'll kill you is oleandrin. Before your death, you can expect vomiting, diarrhea, a racing heart, and a few seizures before you slip into a coma and inevitably die. This plant is so harmful to humans that people have nearly died from eating honey made from bees who visited an oleander. And number one, the rules repeat. An oddly striking plant that the seeds are often worn as jewelry, which is perfectly safe, unless that seed is scratched, broken, or worst of all, chewed, it'll be the last mistake you ever made. Just 3 micrograms of the average inside will kill an adult. In fact, some bead makers just die after making them. But playing with a poison stronger than ricin, it's bound to happen. 5 interesting stuff. Number 5. This is an orangutan performing a dexterity test. Their mouths are almost like a fifth hand, gentle enough to manipulate objects with great accuracy, but also strong enough to just carry stuff around to free their hands and hands. Number 4. People have tried smuggling you know what into everything, including rocks. Someone with a really close eye must have caught this, because I would have just been accessory to smuggling, because it just looks like rocks to me. Number 3. There's a rare genetic skin disorder at birth called Harlequin type ichthyosis. It's extremely painful and covers a baby in abnormally thick plates of skin, which leaves a baby with distorted facial features, including inside out eyes and inside out mouths. The oldest known survivor is 38, and she's outlived most with it by a long shot. Obviously this disorder is inherently graphic, but please, don't go looking it up. Number 2. Animals like to get a little tipsy too sometimes, like this magpie, who's had one too many fermented apples and has to walk home to avoid FUI. And number 1. This is the first death ever recorded. Obviously, I can't show this either, but it's France Raikow jumping off the Eiffel Tower to prove his invention. The backup pair too didn't deploy, and after falling almost 200 feet, he touched the ground intentionally for his last time. 5 facts that sound like lies. Number 5. Toronto, Canada's mayor got caught smoking crack. This man was a legit crazy person who took office. Really, like 10 of his stunts could've win here, but... This one's a smoking gun, or crack. Number four, Nikola Tesla had a whopping 308 patents. And if you don't believe me, you can just look at them for yourself here. And stop. Wow, a system of electronical power transmission. Very cool, Tesla. Number three, shingles, that weird red itchy stuff older people get, is actually herpes. And while the herpes can't give you shingles, it can give you chicken pox. And honestly, chicken pox has always sound made up to me. I've still never seen a single chicken puck in my life, but that's just me. Number two, the reason you have silent but deadly farts is because it's high quantity of sulfur containing compounds, which smells like death and eggs. But your loud ones are just CO2 and methane making an explosion of non-fitted candles. And number one, this has been my voice you're hearing, but it's not me reading. An AI trained software is reading after I trained it with my voice. This tech is still early, but in a couple of years, you'll be able to make anyone say anything. Nobody's ever seen a photo of the guy that created the Mormon religion. Joseph Smith, the man who found a golden plates engraved by God in Egyptian hieroglyphs. Well, that is until now, because a descendant of Joseph, his great-great-grandson to be exact, found a locket in his old family possessions with his image. They compared it with his death mask and have confirmed it's him. Though, family and a religious group definitely aren't experts, and they really could just be lying. But here's that image, cleaned up and photoshopped next to one of his wives. 38-year-old Joseph Smith was not only married to this girl, 14-year-old Helen Kimball, but also had at the very least 26 other wives, with a more accurate number being around 40. And Helen wasn't even the youngest. That title would go to Nancy Winchester, which also wasn't out of the ordinary, seeing as he had three 16-year-old wives, two 17-year-old wives, and four 19-year-old wives. And that definitely isn't it, since we don't even know some of his wife's ages, or really who they are at all. But, yep, supposedly that's him. Claimed by his direct descendants in the Mormon church. You can make anything you want now. Just give it to this AI and it'll spit it out. This is my tater tot computer. This next one, instead of the milk man, I typed the man milk delivering his men. But only after thinking about milking a man did I realize I don't ever want to see this again. And I really don't want to know what's in there. Faded George Washington with the fade gave me this gem. I can imagine if I went back in time and showed him this, he'd probably spontaneously combust. This next one, I combined the two things I like and told him to make a Pokemon inspired by the artist Salvador Dali. And then I went down a weird path because my next response was to ask for a disgusting creature arising from the depths of the underworld in 3D. I don't know, it seems misunderstood but chill. Here, we have a creepy monster in the dark. And then probably my second favorite one so far, Hulk. For the last two, we have Psychosis, which seems pretty accurate. And lastly, the meaning of life. Oh my God. It all makes sense. Three prison ventures. 
Number 3. An atomic wedgie actually took a man's life. In Denver, Colorado in 2013, a man and his stepson were fighting, when the stepson knocked out the stepdad and tried to humiliate him when he woke up by giving him the atomic wedgie. And if you don't know what that is, it's one that goes over the head. Yet, he never woke up because his atomic wedgie strangled him and took his life. The stepson was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Number 2. Alabama pastor John Thomas Martin is a well-known anti-LGBTQ pastor. Or, should I say, was a well-known anti-LGBTQ pastor. Until he was caught touching on little boys inappropriately and sentenced to 10 years in prison in June of 2022. And number 1. No, this isn't anyone being harmed or in danger. This is the BTK's equipment, also known as the Bind, Torture, Kill, Murderer. But this is also the BTK photographing himself in bondage. Real name Dennis Rader, doing this for real to 10 people before he took their lives. He was caught and sentenced to 175 years in prison, and is still alive to this day, serving in a maximum security prison just 30 miles away from Wichita, Kansas. If you had to fight bare knuckles with every predator in the US, which ones would you beat? Well, let's just get the bears out of the way, because birthday suit you versus a bear is going to the bear scenes 10 out of 10 times. Dead, really dead, really extremely dead. Alligators and crocs though, you're also dead. Wolves is actually where the odds turn, because there's actually a slim chance you win. Say if you're a trained MMA fighter or get really lucky positioning, you're still most likely dead, but there's a little bit of hope. Mountain lions, you're slightly less dead because they're smaller and only really perfected ambush killing, but he'll still probably best you. Coyotes is where you finally get a little respect because while they leave you looking like Mojo Jojo, you'll most likely win. Like a pit, a rot, or even a lab can take them out. But let's put you back in your place because again, 10 out of 10 times, you will get killed by the bloodthirsty. You're suggested to not stand your ground because they will just kill you. And he's a run on sight like he's in a bingo book or something. Even though you can't outrun a moose, when that doesn't work, the most professional and prepared advice is to curl up into a little ball and try to protect your organs and hopefully you'll just get bored before stomping you into the afterlife. Tulsa Massacre Starting because of a lynch mob wasn't handed dick, a black teen accused of assaulting a girl when he accidentally stepped on her foot, the mob of whites tried to break into the National Guard armory for the weapons to then break into where dick was held and kill him. The mob had grew to about 1500 angry white people when city officials responded by deputizing people in the mob and giving them weapons and in less than 24 hours time, what was once one of the wealthiest and peaceful black neighborhoods was burnt to the ground. Around 1300 black homes burned down, over 200 looted and possessions stolen, black owned businesses were targeted destroying newspaper outlets, a school, a library, a hospital, churches, hotels, and any other known businesses that was owned by black people. This mob left 8,000 black people homeless, and the government claimed 36 people were killed in all this. Yet, it's likely the number is around 300, because there was obviously a massive cover-up, with fake stories of dick, state militia, and police burning any evidence that surfaced about the massacre, and that's why these striking photos and recounts were so little seen and heard. Two weeks ago, I celebrated my 107th birthday. Most common baby names now versus 100 years ago. Last year, the top baby names were for boys Theodore, Henry, Lucas, Benjamin, William, James, Elijah, Oliver, Noah, and number one, Liam. For girls, it was Harper, Evelyn, Mia, Isabella, Sophia, Ava, Amelia, Charlotte, Emma, and number one, Olivia. And as for 1921, 100 years prior, the most popular baby names for boys Donald, Edward, Richard, Joseph, George, Charles, William, James, John, and number one, Robert. For girls, Francis, Mildred, Doris, Virginia, Ruth, Margaret, Betty, Helen, Dorothy, and Mary. So as we can see, only two names have stayed in the top 10 for the past 100 years. Weirdly, James, which is a bottom tier name, and William, a top tier name. But who knows? Names usually happen in waves of popularity. Maybe we'll start seeing Doris, Mildreds, and Betty babies walking around sometime soon. Jerry Santoro, as she lay lifeless victim of a botched illegal abortion. Meanwhile, Clyde Dixon, the man to accidentally get her pregnant, frantically rushes around the room, gathering the textbook and medical equipment he brought after feeling just as responsible as her for the untimely pregnancy. In Jerry's life before this moment, though as painfully ordinary as she was, had gathered the courage to leave her husband, Sam. Though battered and bruised from years of abuse, Sam Santoro, leaning on the fact he grew up an abused and unloved orphan, took any anger he had out on her. But after fearing the safety for her two children, if he had taken the abuse too far, she grabbed her two children and moved over 2,000 miles away. After a while, her new man Clyde, who she met working at an institution for the disabled, had been what she had hoped her first husband would be. But when Sam announced he'd be coming to visit his children, Jerry, and her friends at the office, taking the abuse into account, came to the conclusion he would most likely kill her if he found out she was pregnant by another man. And when she told Clyde, that's when he gathered the supplies, and you know how it ended. In 1995, Judy, Jerry's oldest daughter, while opposed to abortion at the time, did get an abortion as a teenager. Certainly hers happening after Roe v. Wade passing made it a bit easier, yet 
the denial of her mother's choice, just a decade before, left two kids without a mom, collided in prison for a conspiracy to commit abortion, and an ordinary but loving mom gone before her time. This happened in June of 1964. And now June of 2022, the 58th anniversary of this event, we now see an end to this fundamental right of choice. This is exactly what absolute power looks like. And with power like this, you'll either stand up to keep your fundamental rights now, or wait, and by that time, they'll be taking a fundamental right that you seem to care about. The Georgia Guidestones, sometimes referred to as the American Stonehenge, is a 20-foot tall monument erected in 1980, and as of July 6, 2022, somebody blew it up. In eight different languages around this monument, these 10 guidelines can be read. On the edges, in four ancient languages, were these. Constructed in the occasion, an apocalypse happened, and people needed help figuring out how to rebuild society. The Swahili and Hindi languages were blown off, so the authorities took it down. And why exactly did this happen? Well, it's not known for sure as of now, but don't mention these stones to your average conspiracy theorist because they'll go nuts. All right conspiracists believe the monument to be what will enact the New World Order. For some reason, in the desolate town of Elberton, Georgia, with a massive population of 4,342, like that's quite possibly the size of your neighborhood, and somehow, a demon-possessed totalitarian government is supposed to rise up from there and control the entire world. Right. And now it's gone. So what? Does it just not happen? Did they bomb it for no reason? Or are we just gonna have to reschedule this whole New World Order thing? Who knows? Dogs have been man's best friend for thousands of years. In the first century AD, a Roman woman's favorite dog would usually be a Maltese. As one Pliny writing goes, as touching the pretty little dogs that our dainty dames make so much, called milite in Latin, if they be ever added on, kept close unto the stomach, they ease the pain thereof. In English, that just means, when you got your homie with you, y'all be kicking it. But we also know the death of a dog was a difficult occasion. They were buried, and this burial was like a family member. They fought with the Romans, they played with the Romans, they ate, slept, died with the Romans. They weren't seen as dogs, they were just seen as family. And as such, these dogs were also just Romans. And I'll leave you with a poem, written for little Patrius. My eyes were wet with tears, our little dog, I bore thee. So, Patrius, never again shalt thou give me thousands of kisses. Never canst thou be contently in my lap. In sadness I have buried thee, and thou deservest. In a resting place of marble, I have put thee, for all time, by my side in the shade. In thy qualities, sagacious thou were like a human being. The first known recording ever of a human voice on April 9th, 1860. After a five-time part sound restoration, this is the clearest audio of the earliest human voice ever recorded. <laughs> Some may call this creepy, some may call it weird, but this is the start of cell phones, movies, TV, music, radio. This is where it all began. <laughs>